There's a huge structural change in media advertising that's changed the news industry forever. The money is quite simply flowing elsewhere. And so news organizations need to adapt if they're going to continue to thrive and survive. Media consumption is also changing fast. 46% of news consumers in the UK and in Europe now use social media to consume news. That's nearly doubled in three years. And as I said before, in the UK, the mobile device, a phone or a tablet, here is the primary source of access to news. Whether this is a good thing depends on which side of bed you get out of. So on the one hand, it's a great new opportunity to reach vast audiences globally without the cost of distributing newspapers. On the other side, it's challenging to keep up with the pace of change. And for now at least, mobile and social means lower monetization for publishers. Publishers didn't have much data before. They had big circulations, but because they didn't have these direct to consumer relationships, they didn't have an opportunity to get feedback from customers. And now we do. And that feedback is rich, it's real time. And crucially, the fact that we run a subscription business means that not only do we get to look at the data and understand it, but we get to do something with it too, to personalize and improve your experience. And this is one of the reasons, I think, why data is now at the heart of so much of what we do. Here's another area that I think is pretty interesting, messaging. Messaging applications are exploding. And readers, at the same time, are increasingly looking for new ways of finding content. You could think about this maybe as the Siri of news. So imagine natural language querying helps readers find relevant articles. Automated summarization could help articulate the salient points, not just of one story, but of 10 or 20 or 50 or 100. The context sensitive nature of these agents or bots could mean that you know what I've read. So you only need to give me the latest bit, not all of the background. And if these agents were environmentally aware, I could say, well, look, I've only got five minutes. You could make sure that we just give you the digest to get you to the stuff that really matters right at that moment. There's a lot of experimentation taking place here. Facebook Messenger and their bot platform, I think, will fuel a lot of this for publishers. But I think there's other opportunities for publishers in AI and natural language processing, both to create something which is more generic outside the confines of Facebook, but also because I think there's an interesting opportunity for creating um, innovative and different user experiences to help readers find things. So we're betting on one thing at the FT, which is what we call engagement. It's a nebulous term that if you talk to someone who works in media, everyone's talking about engagement. We believe in deepening it. The whole point is, have you ever bought something that you didn't use? And you kind of went, you know, that's one of the challenges with newspaper subscriptions. You see them piling up every day, and you see all of that intelligence and information that you haven't had a chance to read yet. And it makes you feel like you're not getting good value for money. Nobody likes that feeling. And so we want to make sure that our subscribers are getting good value for money and that they're making use of the journalism that they've paid for. Engagement means how do we address the challenge of attracting and retaining readers when the competition for attention is so scarce, when I'm constantly distracted and pulled in a bunch of different directions, especially digitally. So engagement is a buzzword. And these are all examples of evidence that I might have engaged with our brand. 
I capture and collect all of this information. So did you sign up to email alerts? Did you share some of the stories that we published on social media? Did you come to an event or a conference that we organized? Uh, did you follow me on Twitter? Did you retweet me? I can see how much time you spent reading as well as whether you read stuff. <clears throat> Great. These are probably helpful cues that we can and do measure. But specifically, I want to understand what is it that drives habitual use of the journalism? Which of these things is the catalyst or one of the catalysts that helps you to become a more loyal reader, to help you to make this part of your daily routine? Thank you.